Welcome to Doctor and the Dude. I am Dr. Jim Siebert, and joining me as always, my hurricane hunting pal, Josh Morgaman. Josh, we're getting a little busy out there in the Atlantic Sea Basin. So Fiona has now become a tropical storm, and the question is, well, we think it will eventually become a hurricane. Now the question is, is really where is it going to go and what is it doing right now? And, and it's kind of been a complicated uh, storm for us to get a kind of a grasp on. Boy, is it super complicated. You know, when you and I were texting last night, I think the word you used to describe the modeling was volatile. And <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. I mean, from run to run, it's all over the place. And the different model suites are showing different things. It is, it's complicated. And I want to ask you about that in a second. For me, there's sort of two phases to Fiona's life cycle to worry about. And the first is the near term. How is it going to affect you know, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Dominican Republic. And then there's, okay, the big, big, the million-dollar question is what happens beyond that. In the near term, you know, it, it's looking a little sheared, as you've noticed, that's exposed center and everything. It looks like it's having a little trouble stacking vertically, pulling together. But once it gets into Caribbean, things could get a little better, and it could make a run at hurricane intensity as it's approaching the Dominican Republic. I'm actually thinking I might, might go down there and hunt it, but uh, we'll have to see how it evolves. Well, you're, you're right about the fact that it really has not come together. It's been struggling. Now, first of all, it's just getting out ahead of some of that African dust that's been still trying to impact a little bit. Upper level winds haven't been that fantastic. Now, of course, the waters are super warm. Uh, so we do believe that it's going to be strengthening. Now, it's interesting that if you go to the Dominican Republic, because we've got some mountains there. And you know, Hispaniola and that, that area, that could actually disrupt the storm just a little bit before it gets on the other side. And, and then that's where we start to see the things change. And so it has been very volatile is, is a really good way to describe it, at least at this point. Yeah, and you know the Dominican Republic, yeah, it is going to probably impact the storm somehow, not just in intensity, but also track, because a lot of times as a cyclone hits the, that, that mountainous island, Hispaniola, you know, it will, the center will reform somewhere and then throw the models off some more. So, Dr. Jim, I want to ask you, I've been looking at the models overnight, and man, it is all over the place, so there's a bug attacking me, and it looks like, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of possible scenarios about whether this thing goes into the southeast goes out to sea. Mm. Looks like the setup is really complicated. Can you explain to me what's going on and what you think is going to happen with that blocking high, as people are calling it? Yeah, well, the blocking high is really just the Bermuda high. It's a big area of high pressure out in the Atlantic. And, and as that drifts more to the west, that tends to push storms towards the U.S. As it goes to the east, it tends to keep things more to the right. And, and really, it's just somewhere in the middle at, at this point. But, you know, we've seen the models all over the place. Uh, the European model the last couple of days had it coming into Florida, maybe even into the Gulf of Mexico. The GFS or the American model had it more coming close to the U.S., almost getting to maybe Virginia and then taking a right-hand turn. Now, the GFS in the last couple of runs has started to go a little bit more to the right, meaning keeping it away from the U.S. Now, the last little part of all this, too, is that we have a strong front next week that's going to come across the U.S. That's going to influence the jet stream. And so it's all about timing. And to me, as I see this, with the storm going just a little bit slower, that's going to give that front a little more time to come across the U.S. And to me, I think that the odds are, and again, it's too early to really say, but the odds are once it gets close to the U.S., it's going to make more of a right-hand turn because I think that front might push it out to sea. Now, as far as the Dominican Republic goes, that's going to be a different story because they are going to be impacted, whether it's a it most likely will be a tropical storm when it makes landfall there. All right, so not to nail you down, but it sounds like you're, if you had to bet money you're you're sort of you're thinking that the odds favor it kind of doing that right hand turn getting scooped up getting pushed out to sea before it makes it to the continental us that's your your guess at this point let's say <sighs> yeah i oh, i really you Sorry. know forecasting is definitely guessing no you're right no you're right i it's absolutely um that's where i am leaning right now that i think it would be close 
but that it will take that right-hand turn and the upper-level winds will move it out quickly. Now, uh, a couple of things, though, to watch for, all right? Now, um, especially with the modeling, if we see the models, which have been very far apart, they are coming together. The more they come together, the more confidence we have uh, in, that, in the solutions. Now, also, look at the modeling, and if you really want to get a rough estimate, just take the, the spaghetti plot, we all look at it, if you just kind of go down the middle of what that plot is saying, because it's a whole bunch of models, you're going to be pretty close to the forecast. Yeah. And, the, and if you look at the spaghetti plots and you go down the middle of that, that suggests a recurve out to sea. Yep. But it's just, you know, the, the certain aspects of certain runs, like the operational euro last night in the last... Uh, in the last run, it showed like a northwest turn toward the United States. I really noticed that. You know, the Canadian model, which I know we don't look at as much, the Canadian model is hardcore on this thing crossing into the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of members of the Canadian ensemble are, which I thought was really interesting. Now, that's not the main model we use here in the U.S., but I thought that was very interesting. And, of course, that sticks out. You know, bottom line is, is there really is a big spread. It's almost like a squashed bug with a leg sticking in <laughs> every direction. And I think it's going to... I know I'm just kind of, I'm getting all, I'm trying to be all zen about this, just accepting the fact that I'm not going to know where this thing is going to go for sure for at least a couple of days. And that's the, the approach I think we have to take with this, is just to watch it very closely. We, we do think it will become a hurricane once it gets on, on the other side of Hispaniola. Uh, and so everybody on the East Coast needs to watch this because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But for now... We just know we're going to keep watching it, and it will, I think, within the next 24 hours, we'll have a much better idea. So, Josh, we can't wait to see what happens with you and if whether or not you're going to go out and hunt this. But, everybody, that's all our time for now, and keep being safe this hurricane season. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.